If you've spent any amount of time on the internet, then you are familiar with this video clip right here. We bring in the studio this morning one of the gay rights activists, Mr. Should I call you Mr? Sure. Pepe Julian Onzima. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for Good morning. Me. Morning to you. Why are you gay? But where does this clip come from? What is the backstory? And what happens after this clip? Today, I'm going to take you through the journey of one of the most ridiculous interviews I have ever seen in my entire life from beginning to end. And before we start, let me give you a little bit of backstory as to how this interview came to be. NBS Television is a Ugandan television network owned by Kin Karisa. And on NBS, they have a segment called The Morning Breeze, which at the time of this interview, was headed by Simon Gwanja. Simon is a lifelong journalist who spends a lot of time talking about all sorts of political issues. And for this episode, Simon had brought on LGBTQ slash trans right activists and transgender individual themselves, Pepe Julian Onzima, essentially just to have a discussion about Pepe's advocation for trans rights in Uganda as well as the ongoing fight for LGBTQ rights in Uganda as well. And that's pretty much all the setup that you need. The really interesting parts take place in the actual interview. So let's watch that. Hello and welcome back. This is the topical discussion on the morning breeze on NBS television. My name is Simon Kagwanjala and well, we're also weighing in on the raging debate on homosexuality in Uganda, which is taking another twist today with questions as to whether Uganda is indeed becoming a safe haven for homosexuals. We bring in the studio this morning one of the gay rights activists, Mr. Should I call you Mr? Sure. Pepe Julian Onzima. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for Good morning. Me. Morning to you. Why are you gay? Now, after all of that prelude that Simon just gave, basically explaining in intricate detail the ongoing issues in Uganda, he starts the interview with the most bizarre question of all time. To just boldly and frankly ask, why are you gay? is the most absurd, hilarious thing I have ever seen in a professional setting. And the most the amusing part about this is it didn't stem from a hateful position it wasn't him asking because he hates the lgbtq community it was genuine ignorance and you'll see this genuine ignorance continue to play out through the whole interview who says i'm gay you are gay you are a transgender. What, 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 what shows that I'm gay? You are a transgender yes, and you're a gay rights activist and an outspoken um, uh, uh, lesbian, homosexual. How can I describe you? I am Pepe Julian Onzima. I'm um, an LGBTI What's that? activist. I'm a human rights defender. I'll, I'll get to wh wh what it is. I'm a human rights defender. Um, currently focusing on LGBTI uh, issues. LGBTI means L is for lesbian, which um, is described as women who are attract, attracted to each other, females who are attracted to each other, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And then uh, gay is two males who are emotionally, physically, uh, sexually attracted to each other. Uh, bisexuals are usually attracted to persons of their own sex as well as the opposite sex. Uh, this one um, usually, it's, it's not simultaneously. It's one at a time. One also tends to, at a certain period of time, overweighs um, the other. Then transgender is uh, basically an umbrella term to, to, to describe people who um, do not conform to 
the sex that they are assigned at birth. Mm -hmm. uh, an umbrella term in the sense that there are people who um, are called transsexuals, they are transversatites, they are cross-dressers, and um, they, they fall under this umbrella. The people who, who, who dress up to express themselves as the sex that were, they were not assigned at birth. Then there are those who actually go and have reassignment of that particular sex, sex that they were assigned at birth. Um, intersex mm -hmm. is um, people who are born with uh, two sexual organs and it can be expressed either externally, as in you can vis uh, visibly see it, or internally, as in the, the organs can be, one of them can be displayed internally. But I'm not a medical uh, expert, so I, 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 I can't give you more than that for that. But, uh, and where do you lie? Common, the common thing, the word they use to describe intersex people is uh, hermaphrodite. Hmm. But in my line of work, that is derogative. Where do I lie? I'm a transgender person. Transgender. You were initially male or female? The sex that was assigned to me at birth was female. And you opted to become male? Not exactly opting. It's, 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 it, it's something that I have been since I was, uh, I was young. But um, yeah, in terms of uh, expression, it's, it's who I am now. How did you discover that you are actually meant to be male? Well, um, growing up, you know, a, a child is born, and when you're growing up, you're, you're within a society that has a certain structure, yeah? And you see yourself basically fitting more in a certain box. I said I was born female, but I was my expression at that time and my internal sense of myself was male. So have you child. have you realigned yourself into being a male or you still share both bo both sexes? Uh, I am within transition. In the beginning, Pepe does take the time to explain each individual characteristic of the individuals that relate to the different aspects of LGBTQ personalities and affects and sexualities. And Simon listens. As you can see, he listens. He has this scowl on his face like he's pissed off, but he's genuinely listening and observing and absorbing everything. And even though he's doing so well at listening, listening and absorbing the information he's being presented, that ignorance shines through so beautifully when he asks a question like this. You're within transition. Yes. Now we're looking at the raging debate. Uh, you're a gay rights activist. Why should someone be gay? Just for the record, I am not a gay rights activist. I believe there's nothing like gay rights. There is human rights. There right. is human rights, uh, and, and, and there are humans who are gay and those who are not gay. So I'm a human rights activist who is um, um, advocating for equality for even people who um, have different sexual orientation or gender identity. So as we stand today, are you dating any female? Yes, I am. You have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. While in transition, you're having a girlfriend? Yes. Do you perform the natural obligations? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sexually active right now. So what are By you doing choice. with this lady? By choice. By choice? Yeah. I've just not, uh, I've chosen not to engage. Doesn't that make you gay? <laughs> this is what kills me about the whole interview. What sort of fucking question is that? Look at the train of thought he went through to get there. He, being respectful the whole time, he's just like, "Hey, so you do have a girlfriend, right? Yeah." And I'm like, but you know. You know, fucking, so that makes you gay. It's just so funny. 
I described a gay person earlier. Someone attracted to, 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 to the same sex. To the same sex. Yeah. Mentally, emotionally, f uh, physically, sexually. So as a human rights activist, what do you think of gays? Are they normal? Is it normal to be gay? Absolutely. I mean, um, most, mo most people, we, we had a chat a little earlier, and um, gay people are born that way. They are born gay. Yeah? Because you tend to realize yourself as, um, or, or, or find out these changes in you when you're a child. But because of the structures of the society, as it is now, about uh, male and female, all those boxes that are placed there, if, as a male, I'm attracted to another male, when we're growing up, the structure is, uh, OK, Simon, Simon has a son. Simon will marry um, the, the sort of betroth you as kids, you know? They will be like, uh, Simon's son um, will marry Pepe's daughter, yeah? But then Pepe's daughter or Simon's son realizes that as he's growing up, actually this thing is not working. You know, he's not attracted to my daughter, but he's attracted to my son. But because society dictates that it should be my daughter with your son, then people tend to hide who they are. And then people think that it's a choice but the whole, um, the whole feeling, the, the, the physical, the emotional, begins at a very early stage. And when people get to an age of uh, puberty where, uh, in, in most cases, people get uh, sexually active, most gay people do not express with the same sex due to fear, due to the, because they do not want to be seen as, um, as not being part of the society. But gay people are actually born with this orientation. Is this a disorder? Absolutely or something not. Natural? It's not. Um, we have uh, records from the World Health Organization. You know, a team of experts who also thought, who thought it was a mental disorder. Now, I know I did paint Simon in a more flowery light earlier, and I want to adjust that perspective. It's not to say that Simon is this champion of gay rights or this lover of LGBT. Not at all. Simon is definitely far more in line with the vast majority of the Ugandan population in the fact that he finds LGBTQ issues unnatural and LGBTQ people unnatural and all sorts of things like that. I'm just saying that he is a lot more open to the discussion and, as you'll continue to see, treats Pepe in a very, very respectful manner compared to the supervillain we're going to see pop up later in the interview. Hello and welcome back. This morning we're getting into a very controversial topic. That's homosexuality in, in Uganda. Uh, President Museveni says gay people should not be killed or persecuted in Uganda as a section of MPs push for the anti-homosexuality <laughs> legislation. Uh, uh, Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, promised that this would be a Christmas gift to Ugandans. The fundamental question is, should homosexuals be given attention in Uganda? Before we proceed with uh, Pepe Julian Onzima, a, 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 a sexual minorities activist. Would that be appropriate? Human rights defender. Human rights defender. Well, we have uh, Pastor Semper online, an anti-gay activist, to tell us his side of the story. Hello, Pastor. And then they go to break, and that supervillain I was talking about shows up. He shows up during their segment where they take questions and they have people phone in. And even then, like I said, Simon is the one pushing back against the pastor who comes on the line by constantly addressing Pepe as the gender that Pepe states that he is. Parliament, uh, we have been promised that it will be passed by Christmas, second they are under tremendous attacks. Uh, people who are found these groups, such as uh, this daughter of ours, Pepe, and uh, so much money is no, being powered. Pastor, into the Pepe is a man. Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, Pepe is a young woman who is suffering from gender identity disorder. She is a girl who has been misled and confused to think she's a man. And so you can see the way she's dressing, the way she's coming across, is trying to be a man. But you know, Pepe, uh, for me as a psychologist, isn't that I an know that there are people, choice? we have so many young After additional discussion and back and forth between Simon and Pepe, they take another call, which happens to be the same exact pastor from before, and he goes on a rant for quite some time in the Ugandan language, and forgive me, I don't speak it and I don't know what he's saying, but I'm sure it was not very nice. And while Pepe and Simon are continuing to discuss the moral quandary surrounding LGBTQ representation and having LGBTQ par parties normalized in society, the fucking villain pastor shows up to the stage and sits down right next to them and starts pulling out fruits to represent penises. <laughs> it's so absurd. I don't even know what the security protocol is for this location. Imagine in your country, there's an official interview going on, a caller calls in, insults the party who's being interviewed and then five minutes later shows up in person sits down and no one is like yelling at him no one's grabbing him off the stage they're just like yeah yeah go go, go knock yourself out Legally, is there any good justification for homosexuality i told you and um, i see pastor semp has come here when I agreed to come to this show, I I'm spoke sorry, to you. Just, I'm sorry, it's just storming. He can, no, he cannot just storm in. So if he storms in, I storm out. Thanks for your time. I cannot go on with this debate Before anymore. you go, do you recognize these things? Pepe, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you, give me, can, can you give me a minute? Pepe, do you recognize some of these things here? These are some of the things they use. I want to give you evidence. You see, Pastor, aren't you being too harsh to uh, these uh, people? No, 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 why, no, no, why, no. Why, for once, can't, 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 you, can't you relax can't you and then think about the pain they go through as society ostracizes them? Can't you tell me what you say? I'm going to tell you what you say. What you say? What you say? What you say? What you say? And while the pastor rambles on about roots and nonsense, Pepe actually temporarily storms off the stage. And rightfully so, if your expectation was to have a regular interview and one of your biggest haters just shows up in person, you don't have to stay there and deal with that nonsense. But eventually Pepe does return and they continue the conversation. <laughs> and what fucking cracks me up is because the pastor was using the cucumber to signify that that's how some lgbtq people were having sex i don't fucking know and then he just starts eating it halfway through I, it personally me if i'm using that to represent anal sex i don't think i'll start eating the fucking thing halfway through the interview i'd personally put it back down on the table or put it in a pocket or something but not just snacking on it halfway through and as the interview begins to wind down because towards the end it just became a shouting match back and forth and there was nothing really achieved but i just find it funny that simon then harps on the point that pepe the entire time has been saying that he's a human rights defender and not specifically an lgbt activist and for some reason it now comes to simon that hey wait a minute where's the h in lgbt for heterosexual and i'm anti-sexual violence uh, which is hey, talking about Kanko there when it comes to violence Kanko we're on the why, same page. why don't you fight for heteros as well what do you mean heterosexuals what do you mean Fight for Tachi, Tachi Manina, yeah. Why what do you mean you fighting for, for, for their rights? Yeah, for their rights. They are so. I I am a human rights defender. I'm not limited. Sodome, Sodome I am not defender. limited. You hmm? you are I am an not limited for LGBTI. I am an activist. Gays, bisexual, uh, bisexual uh, and intersexuals. Let me tell you something. Where's the H? Hmm? <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't defend me. And that is the full interview. Trust me, I trimmed out a lot of fat that was just yelling back and forth. And ultimately, like I said, nothing is achieved here. There is no understanding on Simon's side. It feels like he was ultimately very, uh, I shouldn't say very, he was ultimately pretty respectful of Pepe. At no point did he misgender Pepe. The pastor was the super antagonist while Simon tried to be a mediator between them. But nothing really came of it and at least we got the memes. I'll post the full video in the description if you want to watch the entirety. But uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you're watching in June, I have this question for you. Why are you gay? Thank you for watching. Behave yourself. Just say a little prayer, get your money, man. Like goes no, on. I'm hopeful, yes I am. Hopeful for today. Take this music and use it. Let it take you away and be hopeful. Okay, cause we hopeful.